welcome to the Dog Scientists. My name's Gaia and my name's Tara. We're here today with Renee and Jim, who are the founders of Tripods.com, the world's largest community for amputee pets and their people. Formed in 2006, Tripods offers information and support for pet parents whose dogs, cats or other animals are facing limb loss. For people who want to adopt a three-legged animal, they help educate about the needs of dogs and cats with one less leg. Their non-profit Tripods Foundation provides financial help to pet parents who cannot afford amputation surgery and even reimburses for a Tripod's first physiotherapy visit. Tripods is a global community with members in many different countries sharing many different experiences. So my first question to you guys is what inspired you to create the Tripods community? Was there a specific event or experience that led to its inception? Oh, there was actually. Um, we had never seen a three-legged dog uh, way back, way back in 2006. And our dog was diagnosed with bone cancer. Jerry. Okay. Um, his, yeah, his name is Jerry. And doctors told us he had osteosarcoma. And we said, whoa, what, what does that mean? And they said, well, if you take his leg off, it'll get rid of the tumor. It won't stop the cancer, but it will um, help him feel better because he was limping really, really terribly at the time. Um, and we didn't know that dogs could be happy on three legs. We really were not sure. And we didn't have a lot of time to decide either because it's a very painful cancer. And um, basically, uh, our, our heads were kind of spinning at the time, right? Yeah, and we were growing a business at the time, and Renee said, I have an idea, let's sell the business, let's, build, let's sell the house, let's buy an RV and travel with Jerry. So we started okay. a little blog to kind of follow Jerry's travels around the country, and that turned into discussion forums and a live chat and lots of emails back and forth, and we grew the community from there. So Jerry was the inspiration, um, but it wasn't until 2014 since when we founded the Tripods Foundation. Okay, that's pretty interesting. Um, you have a, you have, did you have any other dogs since then, and were they tripods as well? Uh, yeah, so, so Jerry was only supposed to live six months, and he ended up living two years. Uh, wow. He really, yeah, really, really beat the odds with that cancer. Most dogs don't live past a year. Um, and then uh, after we lost Jerry, we adopted Wyatt. Wyatt was a German Shepherd. It was like about nine Jerry. months later. Yeah, almost, almost a year. Um, Wyatt was missing a rear leg, whereas Jerry was missing a front. So we thought it, it would be interesting to have a, a, that kind of experience with a tripod. Well, Wyatt was a, also a victim of neglect. He was left tethered and the leg mm -hmm. got strangulated and lost a leg that way as a puppy. But he, we helped him love life on three legs for almost 12 years. 12? It was over 12 Over 12 years. years. Yeah, yeah, he made it to <coughs> his 12th wow, birthday. That's great. And then, yeah, yeah. And then uh, two years after we lost Wyatt, we are now on our third tripod. Third tripod spokes dog, and this time we have Nellie. And Nellie, she's the three and a half legged. Yeah, dog. she. We call her our three and a half legged honorary tripod because she has an old injury that somebody didn't treat, didn't and know. her her leg is uh, front leg is frozen. So she kind of <sighs> uses it. She kind of doesn't. But um, all the doctors agree that amputating wouldn't be the best thing for her well the doctors so, want to save that as the last resort so yeah. they've presented various options rehab isn't going to fix it for technical people out there it's a carpal flexion contracture so the leg does not extend so they can go in and do a tenoctomy i think it is and cut tendons and get it to freeze in the proper position and hopefully that might work but then it might need some arthrodesis or a brace and we're going down a rabbit hole <laughs> What is the biggest difference that you found between Wyatt and Jerry with the front leg amputation versus the rear leg amputation? That's a, that's a great question. Uh, front leg amputees, um, because dogs carry more weight on the front, some say 60% around there, um, he moved very differently than Wyatt, who was missing his rear leg. So Jerry had the hop. You know, he was very obvious when he walked and ran and trotted um, and uh, he put stresses on different parts of his body mostly on the front the neck and the shoulders uh, whereas Wyatt would um, 
walk in more of a C shape like this to get around. So it kind of used the tail as a propeller as you moved. Yeah. So that caused a lot of rear end. He had, yeah, sexual. Wyatt had a lot of rear end problems. Also, because he was a German Shepherd, that didn't make matters any better for him. Um, so we, uh, both dogs, you know, front and rear leggers <laughs> both have different different issues associated with it. And one um, key difference uh, when it comes to like living upstairs or going up and down stairs, mm -hmm. a, a front legger is going to have a harder time going down because they're putting all that weight on that one leg going down. Whereas yeah. a rear leg tripod is going to have a harder time going up because they have only one leg to propel themselves going up. Yeah. We, and with, the, yeah. With the, the one other, th I'm sorry, yeah. I'll, I'll go ahead. Um, the one other thing I notice is that um, since the, the tr front leg tripods, you know, dogs carry more weight up front, it seemed like the immediate recovery was more difficult getting used to putting all that weight on the front leg. Mm -hmm. But I noticed that that recovery seemed to be quicker and the muscle mass built quicker in Jerry missing a front leg than Wyatt missing the rear. And that might be breed specific, but it seemed to take longer to build up that muscle mass and strength in the rear end. Mm -hmm. So it might be breed specific, but that was just a, something I observed. Yeah, it's also with our dog, Boris, who is a tripod, he lost his rear leg. He figured it out relatively fast how to sort of live normally, I guess, again, on his three legs. Um, like you said, I mean, going upstairs is kind of hard for him sometimes. He prefers ramps. Um, but you said Nelly has only, she has three and a half legs. Do you, did you get her a prosthetic for the half leg? You know, so she still has the paw yeah. and she uses it, but, and she can run and play, but it tends to buckle over once she gets oh, tired. Okay. So the prosthetic is an option. We, yeah. We talked to the vets at uh, Colorado state where actually where, um, ortho pets, um, okay, does yeah. a lot of work and and we talked to them about amputating uh, doing a partial and getting her prosthetic but um, they really feel that it's it's a last resort at this point okay um, so we're gonna play it by ear she's still pretty young we're gonna see how it goes all right I see so what when you started the tripods community what is sort of what kind of challenges did you face um, did were people very accepting of tripods or not did they want to learn more or not I think we started it really because when you tell somebody that you're going to amputate your dog's leg, even if it's for something like cancer, which is pretty devastating, uh, the general public, a lot of people will say that's cruel. They will say, why would you do that to a dog? They can't live like that. How are they going yeah. to be happy? And unless somebody's been in that situation where they have to make the decision, um, they don't get it. They really, really don't. So you feel very alone. And so as a, a community, you know, we're there to support people, not necessarily to say, yeah, go and do the amputation, everything will be great, but just to give them education so that when their friends and family aren't very accepting of the idea, come back to them, they will have some good information to share and they'll feel more empowered by being educated through our community. Within our community, everybody was very welcoming to each other and it really started to take off when the forums mm -hmm. got developed around 2008. And that was prior to the Facebook we know today, the social media and the bells and whistles and the hatred that happens on those platforms. Yeah. So with the niche community where people are gathering around a common cause that they're all passionate about, there was really no, um, dispute among members. Everyone kind of supported each other wholeheartedly. So wh what is your main sort of platform at the moment? You obviously have a website and there you have the blog where you write about different stuff, but you also have the Facebook group. So it was like, what is sort of the main, main platform, I guess? Um, the primary platform where everything happens and all the resources and engagement among members would be on the website. And you asked about challenges a minute ago, and at the beginning, we had technical challenges because this grew okay. quickly and exponentially. And Tripods now is a network of more than 2,000 three-legged dog and cat blogs, hundreds of thousands of forum posts over the past 15 years, um, a news blog, a gear blog, a nutrition blog, uh, two stores for gifts and downloads and gear. So 
that all happens at tripods.com and tripods.org is where all of the financial aid resources and the, the toll-free helpline fundraising. and fundraising happens. I think the biggest thing for me is maybe I quickly need to explain to our viewers is I reached out to you guys on your Instagram page and I wasn't actually expecting a response, but you guys did respond and that was a great moment for me because I was like, oh my God, there's a community for tripods and I was looking into what I can do with Boris and you know, because he's only has three legs and it's I don't know a lot of people who have a dog with three legs and then I saw you guys and you post a lot about other three-legged dogs and how happy they are or like stuff like good information you can read about amputation and surgery it was just it was really great to be able to talk to you because I thought okay you know you have a website and you wouldn't be able to reach out to them because they're very busy but you guys were very open and friendly and I think that is sort of what drew me to the community as the first like thing First well, thank you. Thank you for That's that. Because so nice. uh, we do need, we do engage on Facebook and Instagram and on social media because that's where everyone is. And that's where everyone's yeah. sharing the pictures and asking the questions. The resources may be at the website, but because we come off as this huge organization, we often do get people that are surprised that Tripods is Jim and Renee. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah, do. we do have some volunteers. We do of have some volunteers. Of course, and it's the but, community yeah. that makes the resources what they are, um, but we will get receive phone calls and ask for a certain department, and I'll just <laughs> hand the phone to Renee. <laughs> okay. Um, were there, so were there any, obviously with your three dogs, that was a very direct case, but were there like any other sort of success stories or memorable oh, sure. moments from the Tricopods community that highlight the impact it has on pet owners' lives? Sure. I think one of the biggest moments that we've had since we started was Tripods people get together in, um, gatherings around the country every now and then it's very informal maybe two people will get together maybe five people will get together but they they have these these get togethers and we know about them and we try to get the word out to the press but it, it usually we don't really ever make headlines but then one year we planned a relatively big get together in virginia and okay. uh, a, a member of ours whose dog lost a leg wrote for the guardian newspaper and she oh, got wow. us yeah yeah and she was there she flew from england to come to this gathering and there were people from all over the country that showed up she wrote the most beautiful story about our community and what the gathering was like and it made the guardians uh, sunday magazine so that was um so that's a the biggest... success story for tripods but for um success stories among animals we've had so many and that's the wonderful yeah. thing about all of these blogs that we enabled is that people share their own stories and a couple that stick out was nova was a great dane blind three-legged survived seven plus years mm -hmm. with osteosarcoma and wow. eisen was another one that lasted i think as long if not longer with no chemotherapy and these you know maggie was a pug so we have you know with mast cells cancer so there's all these different kinds of stories and some of these people get passionate like maggie's blog has very detailed nutritional information about how they um cared for maggie and was another success story there and then we have a lot of examples of dogs who lost their leg to cancer and they completely beat the odds and defied everybody's expectations so Dogs who were only supposed to live six months or a year have, uh, there was one who he just passed away this week. He lived 10 years. <laughs> this dog was diagnosed when he was a, like a year old. He had osteosarcoma and he lived 10 incredible years. So a lot of these stories we, we try to write about and share so that when somebody is getting the bad news that their animal needs to lose a leg, they have some kind of hope to look forward to. And now we have more than 100 three-legged cat blogs, so specifically yeah. cat bloggers, and there are some certain peculiarities during recovery that all of them can share, and that cats yeah. have symptoms that dogs don't exhibit, so there's a lot of help going on specifically among that little niche as well. Well, yeah, I think that when you learn that your dog is going to become, or cat, 
I can only speak from a dog perspective that your dog is going to become a tripod or you think oh my god he's going to have so many problems and mm-hmm. he's going to be on three legs and <coughs> he's going to have because the vet is very is very helpful in most cases but he does warn you and says look there he might get hip problems he might get other problems and you start worrying and then you're like you hear of dogs or cats that have lived a really long life with three legs and you're just it's that sense of relief you feel you're like okay he's not going to die within a year now it's going to be mm-hmm. okay just take it step by step yeah i i would totally agree with that the the more that people can see that things are going to be okay the more they can relax so then their dog relaxes and that's why we did what we do because in 2006 when this happened with us we didn't have all those stories and we had no idea we felt lost and alone in a hotel room waiting for the call from the doctor and renee went to youtube and she found one video of Moose, a Great Dane, digging up a gopher with one front leg. And we thought, if that dog can do it, Jerry can certainly do it. Yeah. And now we have the social media platforms where a lot of it is, oh, hugs, he'll be fine. And in most cases, they may be. But yes, complications can occur. And I think both stories need to be shared so people can be prepared for those times. Mm-hmm. In like your experience, you've been doing this a long time. When uh, a pet parent learns that they're gonna have their their dog is about to get their leg amputated, whether it's the whole leg, part of the leg, what is sort of the biggest concern they have? Their biggest worry in that moment? <laughs> you know, it's funny, but I think a lot of people their first worry is, how's my dog gonna use the bathroom? <laughs> We get that a lot. We do. We get that a lot. People will ask that question. And we're like, that is going to be the least of your concerns right now. They figure it out they pretty easily. But I think for them, um, a lot of people worry that their dog won't be emotionally happy. They okay. worry that their dog will be depressed because the dog can't do what the dog used to do. And our job is to show them that life can be good it's just going to be different and the dog is going to lead the way and show them how to make the most of every single day so the dog's not going to look back and go oh i'm so sad i can't go on that five mile hike anymore dog's gonna be like hey let's go for a walk down the street and back i mean they just they just go on they're not stuck in the past the way we do so a lot of times we're just mourning what we're not going to be able to do anymore and so their biggest concern is, how is my dog going to be happy? Where it really is, how am I going to be happy? Because I don't know what to do with my dog. We've had members who think their dog is depressed or actually angry at them for what they've done to their dog. But the dogs are resilient. They're going to bounce back. They'll wake up without a leg. They'll adapt. They'll adjust their stance. And they'll move on to make the most of life. And that's why we tend to say, be more dog. And we wrote a book about that, Be More Dog Living in Now. Because the worst recoveries we've seen is from these people that are so stressed out and so worried and babying their animal during recovery um, that those kind of get difficult because the dog wonders, why is everything so different? Oh, it must be different. Oh, you're upset. But this should be an upsetting thing because they're going to follow the pack leader. So we say, you know, follow your dog's lead. Let them, yeah. you know, recover and, and, and follow their lead. One rehab vet once told us a little tough love goes a long way. You know, let them get up on their own and come to the food. Don't be hand feeding them in their, in their bed for a couple of weeks because they're going to get used to that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think something that sort of goes or like is also with that is, I mean, with our, we have a pack of dogs and when Boris lost his leg, they didn't treat him differently. I mean, they played mm-hmm. normally. Yeah, he might not have been able to sort of jump the way he did before. I mean, he does now. He's very, very active. Yeah. But they they sort of just accepted him, and he did too. And it was just like, okay, I guess this is now, and we're going to live with it. And life goes on. And that sort of, I think, is a really great way uh, to look at it uh, for a dog and also for like what we do. It's I, also I think like, it's... Yeah. No. Oh, oh I, I just, I think it's neat that you have other dogs to um, be able to have that experience because people like us who just have one dog, we don't see how our dog's gonna interact right away with, with other dogs. Yeah. So to, to be able to share that with people, that's so important um, because a lot of people worry that other dogs are gonna treat their dog differently. That's yeah. like, that's also a very big concern. And they, as you yeah. saw, they don't. 
it was a big concern of ours when we first got Boris amputated. We we're like, oh no, how are the others going to treat him? They're going to leave mm -hmm. him out to playing and he's not going to be part of the pack anymore. I think Boris is the center of attention right now. He <laughs> always has been and he always will be. Like, you can do whatever you want to Boris. That will never change. And it's, just, <laughs> it's like the beginning, you're like, oh, I got to treat him with so much respect and got to take care of him. And he's just sitting there like, why are you still here? Go somewhere else. Exactly. I'm going to play. Like, literally. Exactly. Yep. You know, a lot of people also wonder, will their dog ever be able to swim again? And the, the answer is yes. And they don't swim in circles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but a, but a, a life vest or a float coat can certainly help because especially with a front legger, they tend to bob up and down in the water. And we discovered Jerry was kind of taken on water. So we now offer, you know, the, the life vest for dogs in the Tripods Gear blog. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, Boris loves to swim. He. He goes, does his laps, and also goes exploring. And with the wait, you think you think, okay, yeah, maybe it's not, you know, it's not that comforting to be somewhere where you can't exactly stand. So he loves the water. Uh. So I guess, how do you and sort of how do you ensure that the information on tripods.com is mm. accurate and reliable, considering diverse needs and conditions of many different dogs? I mean, mm -hmm. big dogs have different problems than little dogs, and yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, and even the amputation surgery protocols can differ from and pain place management. to place, country to country. Um, I'm a journalist by trade. That's, that's what I do. So my mission is to make sure that the information that we provide is accurate, that it's vetted by the veterinary community, and that it's something that a vet will look at and go, yeah, I'll send my client there because they're not putting out a bunch of <laughs> hoo-ha garbage. Um, so I interview vets and we have professionals in the field because we are not vets. We're not even scientists. <laughs> we are just passionate about this. But we turn to the veterinary community to educate us and our members about things like um, pain management, thank you. Um, prosthetics, <laughs> Yeah, Re prosthetics, recovery yeah. process and rehab, rehab, rehab. Mm -hmm. um, so one thing we've done as Tripods, the organization, is attend veterinary conferences where okay. we engage with the veterinary community because that's where our customers, our members, get the news. So yeah. by reaching out with and engaging with the veterinarians, we provide them with brochures that they can give their clients who are facing amputation that send them to our resources for the emotional help. But like we have a tripods helpline that people mm -hmm. can call and then the first thing we say is we're not a veterinarian. If you have medical questions, consult with your vet. So like Renee's modest, she interviews, you know, leading orthopedic surgeons in the industry and the top pain management veterinary doctors so that we can say, oh, if you want factual information and to know that this is, you know, valid vetted information, vetted, get it? Uh -huh. <laughs> um, <laughs> We can point them to these interviews, whereas, you know, social media is great for sharing stories, but you get a lot of advice from people who aren't necessarily it's credentialed. just anecdotal and evidence. Every dog and is different. They might yeah. be giving advice about their Great Dane to someone who has a question about a pug in the front leg yeah. or rear leg or cancer or snake bite. Um, so how we do it is going to the source and providing that information directly from the vets and the surgeons and the rehab specialists. Yep. When you speak to veterinarians or researchers in the field of prosthetics or three-legged dogs or things like that, what is sort of the biggest thing they say that pet owners sort of misunderstand or don't understand about them? Is it sort of that they can't ask questions, that their worry is misplaced, or that they have the wrong idea? Mm, I think it depends on what type of practitioner we're talking to. So mm -hmm. uh, a rehab therapist, a physiotherapist, will say that a lot of people um, aren't really sure what good safe activity looks like in their dog and mm -hmm. then a veterinarian i don't know that's a good question what would you think well i think a lot of the pet parents are just unaware of the possibilities and capabilities out there and the treatment modalities like yeah. rehabilitation and, and proper pain management protocols and unfortunately there are still veterinarians out there who send 
pets home with what was the one the other day? It was nothing but an uh, anti Nothing but an anti inflammatory, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, like, poor, basically, they poor came home with an ibuprofen. And we've yeah. heard of vets saying, he'll be fine, just let him go be a dog. And that's great to an extent, but they can hurt themselves and they do need a bit of moderation. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's important. I mean, we've been saying now how they're pretty normal after their surgery, but mm -hmm. it is sort of, you need to know that some stuff does change and obviously they lose a limb, which sort of does have an effect on the rest of their body. Um, and overall, it can affect their health. And we're not saying that you shouldn't go to a vet. I like just when you have something, I like definitely do. And if you have any questions, sort of go to someone who has the knowledge. Like you said, don't ask. A random stranger on social <laughs> media what their opinion is um so definitely don't just assume everything is going to be okay it, and yeah, it can exactly. be normal but we like to call it the new normal so it's different it's not you know it's it's just different it doesn't have to be worse and the one mm -hmm. common thread we hear from all vets surgeons pain management experts and rehab specialists has to do with weight management yeah. Because the animal has lost a limb, they are com they're compensating that weight on one of the front or rear limbs, and it is, it's just so mandatory to keep them fit and trim and a little bit Slightly on the, the, underweight. the slimmer side. Yeah, yeah. and that's, that's one reason why the Tripods Foundation will pay for the first physiotherapy visit for a tripod because we want people to get that knowledge firsthand. Don't just listen to us. Go have your dog evaluated by somebody who could put their hands on your dog and tell you, here's where your dog is strong, here's where your dog is not strong. This is what good activity looks like, this is what bad activity looks like. Every dog is different, every lifestyle is different. Not everybody is gonna be crazy about exercising their dog the way the therapist wants them to. So it's, it's just really important to establish that relationship with one. So we will pay up to $200 for somebody to go on their first visit um, so they can get that information. And then later on, as their tripod grows older, they have a point of contact with a professional who knows their dog's history because uh, tripods do, they are more prone to problems later on, osteoarthritis. Yeah. Um, Certain things just, you know, they, they weren't born to move that way, so all that compensation catches up eventually. The longer you work with a therapist, the more you can delay that, that point. But like our dog Wyatt, he, when he was about 10 years old, that's when things really started hitting him. So it's, it's just good to, to have a relationship with, with somebody out there who understands the needs of a tripod. And it doesn't matter where you are, there's now virtual consulting that therapists are doing. So if you can't get to a therapist in your city, um, you can do it online now. We'll still pay for that first visit. And at home program, treatment programs, yeah. like a Veterinary yeah. Teaching Academy has a program that you can download from Tripods that's kind of a, a fit all Tripods, but it's designed for front or rear. We still recommend it's best to get a personal consultation, mm -hmm. but if you don't have one near you, you can have a program designed and it's kind of a one size fits all for all front mm -hmm. leg or rear leg Tripods. Pretty cool, actually. It's amazing what Thanks. you guys have done. It's impressive, actually. Thank um, you. you. You said you attend like veterinary conferences. Conferences. Are there? Have you guys ever been involved in any re in any research or scientific advancement that is related to hmm. amputee care? Like, have you been there or had like had firsthand experience or something like this? We have had many researchers uh, reach out to us. Uh, wanting to get in touch with the community because they're working on a paper. So really? at Colorado State, uh, there have been uh, there two was, papers There written. was a gait analysis study yeah. at Colorado State University. There was a gait analysis, and then there was uh, one where um, a vet recruited some members to answer questions about their dog's orthopedic surgeries after amputation. So one of the common injuries in tripods, in a lot of dogs, is uh, cruciate ruptures. And this veterinarian did a study on the success rate of, of orthopedic surgeries in three-legged dogs. So then there was an Italian vet who reached out to us and he did a survey on phantom limb pain in amputee dogs. And I think um, that one was probably about five years mm -hmm. ago, but all of them um, are on our website. I could share the links with you if you'd like. 
Uh, yeah, that definitely. would be great. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, it's, it's an honor when, when a vet reaches out to us like that because we want to further the education out there for people as well as the veterinary community because it's still, you know, it's still a pretty new thing and yeah. especially prosthetics. Um, we ha are really excited about the possibilities. We just want to make sure that people do it the right way like you did, uh, not make their own. Um, we see a lot of... <laughs> so we've been we contacted by yeah. schools that are, have a project where the students want to develop a prosthetic and we tend to not get too involved with that. Instead, we say, you know, please get a veterinarian on board and consult with someone locally that they can, you know, understand the physiology yeah. of the animal and the gait analysis and that sort yeah. of thing so they don't just put something on the dog that can do more harm than good. Yeah, because not every prosthetic is good for a dog. It needs right. to be built the right way so it exactly. shifts the weight and it doesn't hurt him and or it's too small, too big, or just makes it worse than it is. We see the same thing with wheelchairs. Yeah. You know, a lot of people think immediately, yeah. oh, my dog is having an amputation. They must need a wheelchair. And my husband's crafty. And they come back with some PVC thing that they made out of piping. And it might not be fitted properly or it might not have the mobility necessary. So wheelchairs can be great. Why it was in a wheelchair for a short period of time. But it needs to be fit properly and prescribed by a rehab therapist in our mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you guys are named tripods for three legs, but there's a lot of dogs also who only have two legs. So I see a lot who only have their two front legs and then use wheelchairs. Do you guys also do stuff with those and try to get those into the community? Because, yeah, it would make sense. Yeah, uh, we, have, we have been in touch with folks with, with two-legged bipods. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't or think Or paralyzed any, dogs. Or, or paralyzed dogs, yeah. Um, but uh, not, they're not a real big presence in our community. I mean, we are such a small little segment of the they're pet welcome. world. They're of absolutely they're welcome. welcome. And all species. Like, we've had other... We have had, Stompy the three-legged rat, we had, who's a member. Yeah, a rat, <laughs> a, a, a one-legged bird. Um, a, ra a rabbit, a couple rabbits <laughs> a couple over rabbits, the years. rabbits, yeah. So we are all species, all, all amount of limbs, doesn't matter. So yeah, everyone's welcome. We just don't see a lot of two-legged dogs. Okay. And sort of in the future, so for the future, what do you hope to do with the tripods community? Do you want to keep growing it or are there like specific goals you want to do or aspirations you want to achieve? You know, one of our biggest aspirations has been to do a tripods lifetime study. So. Okay have a, a teaching institution like Colorado State follow a group of dogs throughout their life. There's a very famous study out there called the Golden Retriever Lifetime Study that they did. And they took uh, several hundred Goldens and, and they're following them as they age, learning things about their, their health and cancer risk and things like that. I would like an orthopedics department to follow tripods to learn the effect of having three legs on a dog's lifetime. Uh, we asked, we asked their, their team over at CSU about that, and we need about a, a million dollars well, A few, a few, a few million start. dollars yeah. to get started. He's fascinated. So, oh, yes, we'd love to oh, do that. Totally we just need a few million it. dollars yeah. to get started. Yeah, so it's all about the money. So we're looking for that perfect donor. So one thing we want the foundation to do is keep tripods resources sustainable into the future and so that's free. and free to the public so that's why we wanted the foundation a nonprofit organization to act as a fundraising arm because you know the, the the server resources alone to host all of these things is expensive but yeah. now we have all these other programs to help pay for surgery and rehab so the foundation the future there is going to be focused on the foundation to help keep these things going rather than expanding what's there because mm -hmm. one of our biggest complaints we have so far is that we have so much information and yeah. on the dot com side the, the goal will be to better funnel people to the information they need and that's more of just kind of a a structural interface engagement community website development task on my end that we have just so much information mm -hmm. with a podcast and brochures and and that's the only complaint nutrition. we ever get where do i start there's, there's so answers. much information if you have questions we have answers and, but it just might take some time to find it and that's why we have ebooks which you can download and get fast answers that way Podcasts. but directing people to the proper resources and continuing them rather than expanding upon them. Yeah. 
I checked out your website and it has a whole lot of information and I was like, oh my God, where do I even begin? And then I was like, reading and I was like, okay, I want this and this. And I was like, there's so much to read. I'll never have the time. (laughs) It is. We understand it's overwhelming. So we created a start page for new people who Mm -hmm. are overwhelmed. They come home, they're overwhelmed. And if you go to tripods.com slash start, it okay. lists all those resources in a very simple way and you can jump off at any point to go to, you know, here's, we have blogs, here we have forums, here we have a chat, here we have assistance programs. And it kind of gives people one long brochure. And I think we have it in four languages. And it is in four right? languages. Yeah. Wow. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely include all the links in the description so people Thanks. can easily access everything. And what languages do you have? What's going to be my question? Uh, we have all the basics. Uh, well, so we have English, Spanish, Spanish, French, and German. German. And what's, is it Portuguese? I think Portuguese is the fourth one. Yeah. That's pretty okay. cool. That's good. German, French, Anybody who Spanish. wants to translate, <laughs> please, if you know a different language, we would love for that to happen. German, Reach Spanish, out. and French, and English. Mm-hmm. How do you guys put, like, find out your information on the tripods? Mm-hmm. Do you get it approved by veterinarians, written by veterinarians? You said you, Renee, you said you were a journalist yourself. Mm-hmm. Do you write it, or how does it work? I generally write 99% of what's there based on interviews with veterinarians, the podcasts that we've done. Um, and just uh, just through my connections with other people in the vet industry, I don't get everything approved by them, but okay. uh, I know that we are on the right track when people join us and they say that my vet referred me. But so. how we find it, you subscribe to various yeah, veter- I read a lot of vet veterinary podcasts. We have our eyes and ears open all the time on social media when someone mentions something, mm-hmm. and then we'll find we'll go down that rabbit hole and find out is this valid? Is and it members something? share information too. Like somebody uh, shared some uh, an arthritis therapy that was out in the UK uh, a year and a half ago, and it just came out here in the US. So things like that, we just try to keep tabs on information that'll be beneficial. With so many members sharing things in the forums and blogs, we get to hear about special treatments like the cementoplasty. The first procedure Mm -hmm. was done in the United States, so we interviewed that veterinarian. So when we find out about these things, we'll dive deeper and Renee will write it out for Mm -hmm. in layman's terms so that people can understand it. Do you guys ever experience any language barriers? Because I'm know that your tripods is in English, but there's so many people who don't speak English or can't write English good enough, and they would love to know more about the tripods community or about tripods in general. So we have, and that's why we created this multilingual start page. We have various members who are still active in the community who have actually you know, stated on the start page in that language. For instance, we have a German member whose dog has passed away since, but is still willing, you know, she has her email address there. And we have seen people post in the forums in Spanish or German or French, and we will go to Google Translate and say, thanks, you're welcome. Please use Google Translate so we can at least try to communicate and then get in touch with a specific member who might speak that language who can then use yeah. our private messaging system. But Google Translate the last few years has it's gotten, better. gotten yeah. so much better. And so generally people will they'll write, like we get a lot of people in the Netherlands and they'll write and they'll apologize for their English and say, I'm using Google Translate. And we're like, wow, your English is better than a lot of people over here. So, you know, don't apologize. And those who don't, we'll translate it and we'll apologize and say, we translated (laughs) it, so I hope this makes sense. Can you please translate yours? Mm -hmm. (laughs) So we we do our best to meet everyone's needs. Yeah. And where are you guys based? So where is Uh Tripods based out of? We are technically based in Texas. Okay. but you know we say uh, we are located as close as your phone or your laptop we are everywhere Um, so yeah we we reach out all all over the place you you mentioned you did a lot of uh, work with colorado state university can i ask why specifically colorado state university well uh, i'm totally biased they are one of the world's best veterinary teaching hospitals they're, yeah. they're definitely in the top five. 
Um, we also, our home base is in Colorado. So Tripods itself is headquartered in Texas. We live in our RV and move around a lot, but we oh, uh, have a place in Colorado. So we come back here and we just have a lot of connections there. We tend to uh, visit the best schools. So we have mm -hmm. friends at UC Davis and have mm -hmm. interviewed a number of their oncologists. And between Davis and Colorado State University, um, it's a couple of the best veterinary teaching institutions. And we highly recommend anyone who's looking for a vet or need a vet, or especially when it comes to something tricky, find a teaching school. Because you get not only the, the best surgeon in that school or that specialty, you also get you the get intern and the students. So you have quite a team working on it who's passionate about finding out how to get to the bottom of that particular mm -hmm. problem. That's actually pretty good advice if a pet parent wants to sort of know more about their MQT dog or cat and they can't find it in your on your website or something, or they want to know more, or they want to do something, they could speak to a professor or researcher mm -hmm. at a mm -hmm. university. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, um, well, thank you for taking time to do this interview. Sure. We, we enjoyed it a lot, and our, I'm sure our viewers did too. And to our viewers, if you like this video, please don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very thank much for having you. us. Thank you. We'll be pleasure. sure to get the word out. Great job doing this.